I originally started out studying physics in Holland uh, and I studied it uh, like many other people because I as a 15, 16 year old was very interested in what physics told us about the nature of reality. I'd done a little bit of philosophy at school and I researched more about it and I thought this sounded more like the kind of physics I wanted to study. I was surprised really that they were in a course together, which I think a lot of people are when they hear about it. But I was really thrilled that I was going to get to study the combination of the two. It's something that I definitely think is an amazing combination. When I was at school, I liked writing essays, but I liked solving mathematical problems too. I didn't want to give up on either. I wish when I uh, went to study, I could have done a degree like physics and philosophy. With physics and philosophy, you look at the theory and you think, but why does this work? Why has the universe conspired in this way? The philosophy has an effect on how you view the physics and how we look at where the theories came from, but also the physics does have some impact on the philosophy because when you're talking about metaphysics and does time exist, as a physicist you have some idea of what you think time is and you, it brings a different attitude to some of these questions too. It starts off at the course quite rigid that there's not much choice in the first two years but after that you start being able to choose specific options and specialise a bit more. In the first year it's mostly maths, a little bit of physics and quite a lot of logic and a small introduction to philosophy. This year I've been doing symmetry and relativity, um, general and special relativity, quantum physics, atomic physics, molecular physics, subatomic physics and classical mechanics. Of the philosophy courses that you choose, you can choose them amongst a range of I think about 16 different topics and you can choose pretty much everything that you want to do which can vary from sticking pretty close to philosophy of physics and philosophy of science to doing Greek philosophy or aesthetics or existentialism. I found the philosophy of physics far and away the most unexpected and interesting part of the course actually. Um, perhaps it was because I wasn't expecting it that it came as a, such a surprise but it's really affected the way I see both subjects. One of the disadvantages of applying for physics and philosophy is that you do have quite a theoretical approach to the physics. Um, in the whole degree we do three days of laboratory work compared to approximately 25 days for physicists. While students sometimes are a bit surprised by how much work it is, I do find that at the end of their four-year degree the physics and philosophy students tend to be far more enthusiastic about what they've done and the degree that they've done than for most other degrees. There's essays to write and there's science to do often at the same time. So you need to be able to balance how you're going to do the two completely different topics. Oxford has an unusually uh, large group of philosophers of physics in the philosophy department. There are some real sort of leaders in the field are here at Oxford and that quite often um, on your reading list then you'll find that you've got people who have, that you're being lectured by the people who wrote the books. Having so many libraries available has been really useful given that the books we use are relatively niche and unusual and therefore quite expensive and quite hard to get hold of. I haven't had to buy any physics textbooks at all. I've just gone to the library that there's a science library that the physicists use, then there's a college library, and then if that fails you and neither of these libraries have the book you want, then you can go to the Bodgen Library, which is a deposit library, it has a copy of every book ever published in the Great Britain. When I first arrived, I found the tutorial system slightly intimidating because you're talking to somebody who's an expert in your field in very small groups. You'll get things wrong and then they'll say, okay, don't do that, try again. That's the whole point of the tutorial process, to help you with your problems, not to help you learn stuff. You teach yourself as much as possible, but the tutorial process is helping you with your problems. Here at Oxford, you'll get taught some theory, but then the questions will be sort of applications of the theory, and that it's actually doing the questions that teaches you the material. The ideal student that comes to study physics and philosophy must have a good background in mathematics and physics. I would recommend that students make sure they prepare for the PAT as a physics exam really because I think the PAT being the physics aptitude test 
um, because I have known people who've been very good at physics and philosophy and just happen to have failed that. And it's just unfortunate because it doesn't give you an opportunity to show off your knowledge. If you apply for the physics and philosophy degree, um, you will have two interviews, one in physics and one in philosophy. And you have to do well at both interviews in order to be admitted. Because I had two at my current college, one at another college, and then a philosophy interview at each college. And that kind of was something of a surprise and a worry because so many interviews in sort of three days. But at the same time, I figured that just gave me more of an opportunity to do well. At the interview in particular, we will ask you puzzles for which you essentially cannot prepare. Um, we're testing your ability to reason out loud on a completely new question about something you haven't thought before. So there's no particular studying for that. For the interview, if something goes wrong, take a deep breath and try and put it into words what's going wrong and they'll help you as much as they can. We're interested in getting the most talented, interested, excited students. We're not particularly interested in admitting students that have prepared particularly well because of their schooling or background. If you've done a physics and philosophy degree, there are many, many employers that are convinced that you've had a very rigorous and thorough education that gives you a huge amount of analytical skills that are applicable in a wide range of areas. I think I still don't really know what I want to do. If I do really well on physics, and I kept on doing, want to keep on doing the physics, I'd probably be looking to do a physics PhD and moving on in that respect, because in most sciences, well, particularly in physics, you kind of need to get to a PhD before they see you as not just an undergraduate, really. I've got friends who are planning to take up positions in corporate law and finance. I think there's lots of people who got involved in the civil service from physics and philosophy. I think that one of the advantages of the course is that it's given me enough transferable skills, as they call them, to be able to do other things. I've got the ability to write essays in a reasonable time scale on a topic that I've only just learnt that week and I've got the ability to apply maths and physics to problems so you kind of got the breadth there that enables you to do well what you're interested in I think. If you're thinking of applying for physics and philosophy and are put off by maybe what appears to be the difficulty for getting onto the course don't let it put you off. 